Hey, you made it all the way to the end. Congrats on finishing the Blender Basics. I hope at this point you feel fairly comfortable navigating the app and have a better understanding of just what it is that Blender can do. Now, if this is your first time learning a 3D software, then it might all feel a little bit abstract still. And that's because there's a really big difference in learning how a tool works and how to use it effectively to make what you want. So that's what we're going to focus on next. In the following course, we'll take all the skills that we learned in these lessons and work on building this mini game console as our first project. I plan to release that on CG Cookie and on the Blender Market in January of 2022. In the meantime, you can also take the previous intro course all about creating this low poly rocket, which makes for a great first project as well. If you do decide to join CG Cookie, I would really recommend tackling the Fundamentals series next. Those are the really thorough introductory courses that will get you up and running with modeling, sculpting, lighting, texturing, shading, rigging, and animation. There's more essential computer graphics info in just those few courses than the first year or so of art school, so it's a great place to start. After that, we have plenty of project-based courses that will help get you more and more comfortable with making things on your own, and those range from beginner to advanced, and our site will help you keep track of your progress along the way. On our forum, there are a couple really interesting threads about learning 3D in general, staying motivated, and how to watch tutorials in order to get the most out of them. I'll link to those below if you want to read through, because I think they'll be helpful for everybody whether you decide to join us or not. The main recurring theme is that how you learn Blender, or anything really, depends on your goals. Are you doing it just for fun to have a new hobby? Are you trying to make something really specific? Or are you trying to get a job as quickly as possible? Your answer to that is going to determine how fast of a pace you might want to learn Blender at, what other software you might want to learn in addition to Blender, what kind of hardware specs you need, and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, your specific situation is going to be unique to you, but I get some of the same questions all the time, so let's run through some general answers that should apply to most people. First, what kind of computer setup should you get if you're going to get one specifically for Blender? That's going to heavily depend on your budget, of course, but I'd recommend going to opendata.blender.org because that'll have a bunch of benchmark data that'll show you how different CPUs and GPUs will perform for Blender specifically. But even if you just watch the tech review videos online, one test that they often use is Cinebench, which is just the Cinema 4D benchmark, and that's going to be a pretty good gauge for just overall 3D graphics performance. So pay attention to that number. Second, a lot of people will ask whether or not they should get a tablet. We have a whole article about that, which I'll link to below. But in short, not really for modeling or most 3D tasks, but definitely yes if you plan to do a lot of sculpting and texture painting. It doesn't have to be fancy, and there are plenty of inexpensive options that you can get online. Next, I want to talk for a second about add-ons. These are Python scripts that can help extend the functionality of Blender, or help make certain features a little bit easier to use. You can find some for free online, or you can find some paid ones on the Blender market. Now, I make add-ons myself sometimes, so obviously I think that they're a good way to save time. But I want to really stress that they're not magic and will not automatically make your work better. Unless they're implementing some really specific feature that Blender lacks that you desperately need, they're mostly just time savers. So just as they might quickly help you get to a good result, they can also help quickly get you into trouble if you use them improperly. So that's why I generally recommend to learn how to do things the long way first at least a couple times. That will help you avoid some of the initial confusion and even if you decide to use that shortcut later, it'll make your use of it that much more effective. So my general advice is this, unless you have a really specific need for it, I probably wouldn't buy or install it. Okay, now for software. If you're looking to do 3D as a hobby, then it doesn't really matter what apps you use, so I'll aim this at people who are looking to do this as a career. My general advice is to learn Blender first, because that way you can learn the core concepts of 3D in general without having to invest anything other than your time. Now, there's also a lot more Blender tutorials out there than any other app, so you'll be able to pick it up a little bit faster. Also, since it's free and ultra-portable, you'll be able to use it alongside any other app that you use in the future, so it's always a handy backup to have in your back pocket. Then, once you have some solid portfolio pieces under your belt, look up what the companies that you might want to work for are using and learn those tools too. It's going to be different for every studio, but you'll probably want to take a look at Substance Painter for texturing, Houdini, Maya, Unreal or Unity, ZBrush, and Marvelous Designer if any of those are related to your area of focus. Speaking of, it might be a good idea to pick one particular aspect of the 3D pipeline to focus on if your goal is to work at a large studio. Even if all you want to do is animation, you'll probably have to fix some models somewhere along the way. And if all you want to do is modeling, I'm sure you'll have to help out with UVs or texturing at some point. So it's always a good idea to have a great general understanding of the entire process first before spending too much time in one particular area. Knowing how your work is going to be used by other people along the way will absolutely make you better at your job. Now, if you're not sure what to focus on first, I would recommend modeling because that's kind of the foundation of the whole thing. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching the Blender Basics all the way to the end and starting your Blender journey with us. 
I'll put links to those Next Steps courses in the description below, and hopefully, I'll see you on cgcookie.com. Bye!